you wake up in the morning, we don't look bad, but we look like a combination of luck and genetics. It's what we do to ourselves, it's how we adorn ourselves and how we present ourselves to the world that is evidence of who we really are inside. This brush for my scalp. Right now I'm filling my scalp because I've got thin hair. This is my full disclosure. And it makes my hair look thick. So by the time I was 15 years old, I was so painted and very over the top, very theatrical, and that's how I lived. I woke up every morning at 5 a.m. and spent two hours getting ready so that seven o'clock I can be on the bus for school. <laughs> This is um, Lower East Side meets Chinatown. You've got borax. Yeah, you got it. This is good. I'm gonna buy this. Borax used to be used in like different products years ago, and it's not used anymore. Just like lanolin isn't really used very much anymore. But this is really hard to find. So you see, you come to different areas and you discover things. And um, I can go home and mix up a batch of some old-fashioned beauty. So I started doing other people's makeup when I was about 15, and that was pretty consistent. Uh, I tried to do singing, and I had a record, a single at one point. I uh, was trying to act and do all of those things, and I worked at Patricia Field's makeup counter. But then I ended up being at a hair and makeup agency. I just wanted insurance. I didn't want to be hungry anymore, so I just wanted a real job. So I worked at 9 to 5 at a job in a cubicle representing some of the top hair and makeup people in the business. And one day, three years in, the phone rang and it was Laura Mercier calling from set. She was doing an American Vogue cover shoot with Steven Mizell and she needed to have an assistant because Kate Moss was going to be getting on a plane earlier than they expected and she needed to get her ready faster. And it was also Amber Valletta on set. So we couldn't find an assistant for her. We called everyone, and so I went because she was needed somebody. So I got there, and Laura was like, oh, Christopher, this is Kate. You'll be doing her makeup. Use my things. Anything you can't find, just let me know. What? I have to do Kate Moss's makeup? I was in a cubicle 20 minutes ago under fluorescent lighting, burning my corneas, and now I have to do Kate Moss's makeup and with someone else's makeup and someone else's tools. We got on set. And Steven Mizell saw Kate and said, Laura, I love the way that you did Kate's eyes. Can you do Amber's eyes more like that? And Laura said, I didn't do her makeup, Christopher did. And Steven, about a month later, put me on the cover of Italian Vogue and a 20-page story and a Dolce & Gabbana campaign. And I was a makeup artist. Moment, but this is Did she die? Oh. Hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm good. How's it going? Pretty good. There's a lot of updates. So, Mariah's team is holding you already for the 17th for one shoot. Come back to New York, and then remember on the 19th, you're holding for another Kelly Ripa job. For the gala, that gala thing yeah. that she's doing. Okay. Thank All you, right. thank I'll you, thank you. you. And when this starts making more sense, please let me know. This way I could try to I'll schedule a life in between all of this. It's like everyone is, today, you're supposed to just fit into all these different little boxes and categories of what everybody considers beautiful. But beauty is something different to everybody. I've always been attracted to crosses and crowns. And to me, a cross is, it kind of is a symbol of strength. Through my travels, whenever I see a cross that I like, I buy it. And then when I put them here, I painted them all the same color as the wall so that it wouldn't be so busy looking. I grew up with such low self-esteem that I needed to emotionally and visualize myself as okay. And so I had to make myself feel like I was important. And so I kind of mentally put a crown on my own head every day. And in a way, that crown was my makeup. This is my makeup room. 
and it's very small, but it's effective. So I do makeup in here. This is where I get ready in the morning. This is, you know, the main space of my home. It's an open floor plan. It's open to the kitchen and the living room and the dining room, 20 foot ceilings. And I just wanted it to feel open and spacious. I wanted it to feel grand. I call it vanilla goth. And this is a mural that I had my friend Brian O'Neill paint. Um, I've known him ever since I was a teenager. And I wanted something that depicted the struggle between good and evil, so we have an archangel fighting demons and putting them back in hell. Why not? So I hate working out. It's like the worst thing ever, and I squeeze it in whenever I can. So I'm just racing across the street to Mark Fisher Fitness, and I'm going to work out. Hey. Oh, hey. 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 Raj and I do heart-to-heart -heart hugs. <laughs> Butt out. Chest up. friends that are coming tonight are from Malaysia, they're in a band, and um, Beat the System is the name of the band, and they're here pursuing their musical dreams. The inspiration for my cosmetic line is possibilities. Everything is possible. I even have this tattoo. It's possible. If you could think it, it's possible. If you could dream it, it's possible. If you want to be it, be it. Makeup is possibilities. You could take the same four eyeshadows and you can make somebody into a monster or a princess. It's all in what you want to express. I'm Christopher Buckle, celebrity makeup artist.